Hello Louise. Hello Heather. Can you hear me? Hello Sarah. Hi Jules. How's your tummy? Hello Kate. Hello. Hello. Hello Fiona. Hello Rose. Whoops. Hello Jenny. Hello Jenny. Jenny sent me that. Hello Malcolm. Hello. Hello Tracy Kibler with a little question mark. Hmm. Hello. Ke Hola. Bonjour. Ça va? Bonjour. No. Hello Beth. My favourite part is the thumb. <laughs> That's so funny. Somebody else said that <laughs> last night. Hello Gillian. Are you going to actually watch or just listen? We can hear you perfectly. Well, if we can't hear me perfectly, I'm afraid the only other option ooh, is my phone because Fifey has taken his phone and I have taken my watch back. Top of the morning, looking very Irish. Green is my second favourite colour after grey. Hello, Judith. Ah, oh, hello Joe, how are you? Joseph McNamara. Don't tell everyone about your... I thought you had a sore tummy. As if I would say anything. Just Photoshop it out. Jules, just send me a photograph and I'll Photoshop out anything you don't like. Hello Jane. Hello William. Hello Margaret. I'm here so you may start. Ah, you lot crack me up, you know. Um, how's I going to say? Gonna say something. Oh yeah. Now then, hello Joe McNamara. Oh you're kidding, Jenny. Is the sound not working? Jenny, are you lying? Are you just saying that to ruin my day? Hello Veronica. Hello. Uh right. I have just been to the post office. Hello, Annaline. I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Uh, I've just been to the post office with two sacks of mail um, and 20 sets of paints. So quite a lot of you, I'm pointing at where you are, your little chats. Hello, Mary Ann Ray, is everything working all right? The sound's fine. Jenny, are you just saying that just to ruin my day? I'm going to block you if you do that. Um, yes, quite a lot of you will be receiving your paints tomorrow, your AJ Ludlow Marianne Rogers set of oh yes your set of about six um, watercolours oh, I've got some lambs they're literally just walking past me here and um, in case you haven't already huge <laughs> you could have posted my bread pudding if only I knew how to make bread pudding any people can be in your live video at any time, okay? Yeah, Joe, but I could just go round and kill Jenny and then she wouldn't be able to watch. Or I could, I could find some way of excluding her. I could tell her that it's going to be on at 12 and not be on at 12. Hello, Laura. Two sacks, yes, two sacks. And nearly all painted so yes i just quickly wanted to say when you receive your paints i think there's a little a little piece of paper inside for you to for you to do color testing and color charts or whatever on i'm not sure whether there was one in mine i don't think there was i'm just gonna no there wasn't in mine anyway I just want to say you won't be used to quite such intense colour and um, be very, very careful with it. You might just want to get a piece of paper and put a tiny weeny little dot of water, no, a tiny little dot of the paint on a little brush with a bit of water just to get the feel for the quantity of pigment. Margaret Wood Naughty, can we pay for death threats? Hello, Charlotte, ditching you for badminton? 
Charlotte, this may come as news to you, but badminton was cancelled. Hello, Philip. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Charlotte Balvin. Anyway, yeah, it's full of sacks and stuff. So, right. This is where we left off this landscape painting yesterday. And I think I'm just going to put it in the bin because you lot have all done such amazing ones. Um, God, there's one. One on the Lockdown Gang. Lockdown Gang is the Facebook group for people who are interested in painting and drawing and looking at each and putting on your attempts, your wonderful masterpieces, your, um, uh, you know, just whatever you'd like. Um, that's the place, virtual eventing. Well, surely you can do that anytime. Product placement. Neil Denham. Hello, Neil. Nice of you to join us. I hope this isn't your first one because obviously we've, we've gelled, we've bonded as a group. Anyway, welcome to... So Lockdown Gang is a place where you can put your, your pictures, your drawings, your photographs if you like. And uh, there are some amazing landscapes. Anyway, uh, this is where we left off this watercolour landscape, which is based on that hill opposite me when I come back from my daily walk. Uh, and I'm going to add some some more um, trees because which I can see and you can't. So I think I'll just tip you up. Oh no, I won't. I think I'll mix the paint first. Um, I went for a shorter walk yesterday because I went for a massive swim. I was like up and down, up and down. And I think the pool that I swim in in the river, which is normally a fisherman's pool, so a bit reserved for them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally. Um, I wouldn't normally go in it, especially if there were people staying in the lodge. But I think it's probably about maybe 40 metres long. So I can get... Hello, Meru. Meru, see that one there at the bottom? Meru is one half of AJ Ludlow watercolours. She sent me my invoice for my next batch of paint sets. I'm just mixing the colour because it's quite boring for you. Katie Weatherhead. Hello, how nice to see you. Um, are you come for tips? I'm still waiting to see what, what you've decided to paint. Elf eel fishing in that pool. We didn't fish for eels in that pool. I had my goggles on and I went right down under the water. I did get some video of some little fishes, but I didn't see any eels. I just don't know how happy I would be if I saw an eel. Just going to mix something. Okay, I'm going to tip you up. Waiting for my paper. Right, with a bit of luck I can still... Yes. Okay, so we've got some sky and we've got the distant trees going on on the sort of heathery hill and then some more trees going on here. Um, I am going to... I, I'm, I was looking over there for inspiration as ever. I spent all my time like looking. It's a miracle I haven't crashed my car because most of the time I'm looking at the landscape and thinking, oh, So, so, so simple. Turning my brush just on its side. Like that. And I want to leave space for something further in the foreground. And this is just like a typical, a very typical um, scene. Mm -hmm. And whichever way you look, whatever the trees are, they're either blowing in one direction or the other. Usually they're leaning towards the east because the wind from the west blows them so hard. I can't remember that bit in that. Uh, is, is it Macbeth, Dunson and something about the trees like marching? 
Are you saying anything? Yeah, it was a really, really nice swim. Last night, five feet uh, came in as well, but he's finding it too cold to just swim in his trunks. So he is swimming in a hideous, I did actually get a photograph, a hideous um, cut off wetsuit. It's got the sleeves cut off, but it's a wetsuit from the dark ages, basically. I think, you know, King Henry might have used it if he was going for a swim. It's so, so ancient. And when it gets wet, it's, it's almost too heavy to carry. I'm just getting some, sorry, I should move this over a touch so you can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm just doing that thing, that sort of blown over hawthorn thing. But he didn't stay in for very long. He said, this is too cold for me. But as you know, I am acclimatised to cold water and it really doesn't bother me. Once I get that initial <gasps> over, I'm going in again this afternoon. I'm sorry, Jules. Jules is a fellow open water swimmer, but at the moment she does not have access to somewhere to swim. Neither of us are that quick, so we do swim along together. But I'm a little bit quicker than her, just so as you know. So. Oops, move my hair out of the way. So yeah, five feet, I couldn't help noticing in his um, ridiculous wetsuit. I said, you're like Max Wall. I don't think he remembers. There used to be a chap who was very odd and he was like a comedian. And he had these um, long, skinny, skinny legs. And I think he used to sort of goose step a bit. Wondering about another there's a colour. Oh maybe there's like a oh there it is. This is the another one of those colours. I think it was cheap. So I bought it and I sometimes use it. It's a little bit of an odd green. Whoops. I'll just check it. Yeah, I quite like that. I don't really want these to be too, too dominant colour-wise because we've got some softer trees in the uh, in the bottom of the of the of the valley here. I am going to just put that to one side. Oh, do you remember this little one that we had a go at yesterday? You can only go, you can only work on what you can see. So right now I am thinking about the view through the window across the valley. And I'm thinking I might just put a couple of more um, my, a couple more trees in the foreground. Got some green. So going back to five feet. And Max Wall. I don't think he, I don't think he's ever seen Max Wall. Am I the only person who's ever, ever, who can remember Max Wall? Whatever he, uh... anyway. Five feet. I said, how much do you weigh? And he said, 12 stone. I said, you're six foot tall. Do you never think you've maybe gone too far? Because the thing is, and um, it's just a bit odd. It is very much like being married to an anorexic teenager. So I got these, 
like three trees with just not a massive amount of um, foliage, leaves on them yet. So yeah, he only weighs 12 stone and and he's always a slightly smug slash embarrassed when I mention this. What he does, and he thinks I don't know he does this, he plots his weight on a piece of graph paper in his office every single day. And it's not because he's particularly, it's not because he's particularly bothered about what he looks like, he just wants to keep his weight down mainly so that the replacement hip he had about um, how are you about 20 years ago lasts as long as possible. And sometimes he gets, he gets a bit worried and he thinks it's maybe reached its, the end of its life. Okay, can you see? My mum mentioned Max Wall whenever I wore tight black Gillian! Hello! Gillian's another swim buddy. If you go to my Facebook page, there's this um, lots and lots of photographs of me through the winter swimming with Gillian. She's the taller, better looking one. Um, but she's probably got personality defects. Anyway, um, she's actually watching today, which is nice, and commenting. And yes, with your magnificent long legs, I expect your mum would say that. So, quite like, mm, 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 I don't remember, it's all never found him funny. No, I didn't think he was funny. I thought he was gruesome. Um, and I'm going to give them little shadows now. So, yeah, imagine being married to a man who was literally like an anorexic teenager. So, he's got this graph paper. And along the bottom of the dates, you know, like eight, uh, well, May the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, up the side, it's got like 12 stone, 12 stone, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, he likes to be here. He likes to be like, he likes the line to go like that. It's very odd. But it's not the oddest thing about him. And then he's a nice chap I've mentioned before. Very nice. Um, so we've got our evening shadows there. <laughs> Just very, very simple, but it's kind of brought it storage almost full. Oh, that's great. Well, that could cut things short, folks. Yet another technical thing for me to wrestle with. I should put that to one side. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I'll just gently tip you up. I can hear the lammies. I know this week we had two of the, two of the irritating things. Um, stuck on our side of the fence last night when I did go out for my shorter than normal walk. I didn't, the reason it's a shorter than normal walk is because two nights ago, three nights ago, I went, <laughs> rumbled, um, and he makes cheese farts. Oh, cheese falls! But actually, some, well, we'll, we'll move on. Sorry about that, Margaret, I misread that. Very nice, yes, he makes cheese farts. Falls. Yeah, I'm going to paint a hair now. I, I did a painting of a hair that was made into a print called Cautious. And it struck me as I walked through the, street, the, the print room and I thought, oh, that would be quite a nice thing to just sit down and do in front of you lot. Yeah, so three nights ago I went for a shorter than normal walk. A longer than normal walk and uh, because the lambs are now big enough for me to walk through with my very very small dogs on leads I did get permission and I went right up 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 up, up onto the hilltop along 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 and then all the way down the very very rough ground and for those of you who know me I suffered a dreadful dreadful accident two and a bit years ago where my ankle was smashed into many pieces 
Some people can put in a request so you can chat with them. Who makes... <laughs> I know, Beth, he's very odd. Ah, yes, there was a pause. Anyway, so, um, and yes, I had a, suffered an appalling accident uh, and my ankle was broken. It was a compound fracture. My bone was sticking out and there was blood everywhere. And, um, and when I did eventually get to hospital, the consultant, who turned out to be pretty much the best in the area, even Rory Harrison, said so. And he said, he's Irish, and he said, this is a very very serious injury and he kept saying it I had to say in the end will you stop saying that just stop saying it anyhow uh, long and the short of it he fixed it he made a terrific job of it uh, and walking I can do a lot of walking now but this was a terrific pressure on my ankle so literally not yesterday but the day before after this long walk it was about an hour and three quarters uh, over rough ground I could barely walk up the stairs um, to bed and the next morning like descending the stairs was an eye water I went backwards anyway it's not so bad now so I went for a slightly shorter walk uh, and I went down the track and I could hear ah, 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 and it was a lamb trapped in between one of Fifey's log stalk piles and the pig netting which divides us from the field um, and um, I think they're still there I'm sick of chucking them back over the fence over the um, Charlotte Ridley, I am. Okay. Is that like a joke? Like, will I am? Okay, so I thought I'll tip you up and I'll paint. Now, the hair is the print I've got in front of me, so I'm completely cheating. Um, I got up, there's a story about this hair. Uh, a, local, a local chap called Hilary Hutchinson, as everybody knows around here, if you... If you catch an animal, and I get it, we've had this before. Rory Morrison, not Harrison. Yeah, you're probably right. He'll be the good-looking orthopaedic surgeon. Anyway, they know that if they catch me um, an animal, like a live mole or a live, uh, or a live whatever, and I can keep it alive long enough to paint, then they might end up with a painting as a thank you. So anyway, Hilary Hutchinson. Hilary as in the man's name. You pulled a hamstring, you've got no idea, Katie. Okay, I'm just mix mixing the first colour, and actually, I quite like that. I'm going to tip you. Oh no, there. I don't know whether this brush might be a tiny weeny bit too. So if the hair's going to sit on the page, I'd want the nose about here, the ears about here, and then there's the body and the feet. I actually think this brush is just a tiny bit too big. I'm going to go down a size. Uh, actually, is there something in between these sizes? Three quarters... This one. Five eighths. Three quarters. Three quarters is bigger than five eighths, that's good. So Hilary the chap rang me up one day, he said, it's Hilary Hutchinson here. He said, uh, I've got a leveret, do you want it? A leveret is a, a young hair. <gasps> yes, 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 I do. Hang on. So nose. Feet, feet, ears, eye. Need to do this really. Um, so this cute leveret had must have gotten his way while he was silaging. Um, that's like cutting, cutting grass to make fodder for the winter. And he saw it, and rather than drive over it, he leapt down from his tractor and clambered across the, the rows of silage that he had cut and caught it and brought it to me in a cat basket. So we made a pen literally straight out my window here and kept it for a couple of days where I painted it. So there's the eye, the nose, the nosy bit thing. 
And that was really, really nice. And then we let it go again. And this is that leveret. And I've done a lot of paintings from the drawings and the photographs which I, which I took. And the colours are separating out here, so you've got a little bit of that, that sort of pinky. <laughs> I've looked at Hare's ears so many, 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 many times, you know, trying to work out what it is about them that just makes them different, and I, I'm, I'm not really the best. I just feel it's... Uh, even though I've, you know, I've handled them, looked at them, I'm alive and dead. Uh, I, I pick up dead animals off the roadside as well. That's a very good way of getting right up, you know, close and personal to... Right, so this is like the... I'm probably going to run out of space at some stage for, to include the feet and things, but that's the way it is. So beginning to come together beside the point of those beside the comment box I've got a saluki do you want it I do not want it animals in cages Marianne exotic <laughs> I just need to it's such a lovely beautiful beautiful warm day it's oddly, uncharacteristically, you might say, that it's drying as quickly as I can. And just um, get the paint down, it's drying. So I'm, I'm actually adding bits of... While I'm, while I'm... Before I've even got all the way around. I quite like to get the whole thing. I need a smaller brush for the legs. Just about got enough space. Oh yes, now this is like the haunch, the back haunch. I don't like it when Fifey says like your haunch. Like I don't know, it just seems a bit It's okay on an animal, but on a human, I don't really Right, so we've got the like back back foot here. It certainly narrows things down when you when you use a, a painting you've already done as a reference you've you've pretty much already taken away all the stuff you're not interested in which is uh, certainly makes life a lot easier yes Okay, so Wendy Reeve is watching. Hey Wendy, how are you? I haven't seen you for yonks. Where are you? We're sort of getting um, it 
it's a lovely little leveret. Is there a tinge of green in that? I don't know if there's a tinge of green in... Yes! Yes, I guess there is actually. I am going to get some of the Q colour. Start just... Um, is that what I want? I'm not sure the colour, like the exact colour is that important, but... And as some of you know, I'm sort of, I'll just try and shuffle this along. Oops. I'm pretty much mixing the paint straight onto my piece of white board here. You could get melamine or, or something. I mean, this is, this, is a, uh, this is a product that we used as a packing material for uh, quite a number of years until the company that makes it um, sort of insisted that I buy about £9,000 worth in one go, which I, I might have made the calculation and thought, well, actually, you know, I'll use that in a number of years, you know, so many years. But, you know, where? It's all very well getting stuff in bulk, but you've got to put it somewhere. And that was the limiting factor. So then we started looking for a different, um, a different product to sandwich the prints in between. See, it's all doing weird things depending on how dry the paper is. Um, and you can see right here, sort of, again, all the things that happen with watercolour, which you may well find if you looked in a book, would say, avoid this, avoid that. And I don't agree. I think... Um, I love all these magical things that that happen. And somehow just try and incorporate them into the work. Oh, I had a good story. Right. The day before yesterday, a woman rang up and it took me a while to realise who she was. She's somebody I knew from quite a while ago. Anyway, um, we were talking about Oh, I'm involved in a campaign objecting to a 56 metre high steel monument that a local landowner would like to position uh, just a few miles away from here in what most people seem to think is a beauty spot that is already very beautiful and has its own intrinsic cultural heritage, mainly uh, you know, wildlife and the Wani Line railway line. Um, I obviously have very strong feelings about this and I absolutely adore the area where he wants to put it. So I'm very much involved in the campaign. If you are interested, go to the Facebook group Keep the Wannies Wild, because the Wannies is the area where this thing is. So anyway, we were discussing it and she said, oh, I remember going to the Wannies. I remember when we used to live in East Woodburn, that's just near here. Uh, and my mother used to take us there for picnics and how marvellous it was and um, and the wildlife and we went to this place and she said, I remember when I was five years old going there for a picnic and my brother and I were. So um, it's almost at a point where I'd be inclined to let it dry. Not quite, I think I might put the black, the black on the ear tips. And I have to say, what she said next didn't come as a surprise because when, not recently, but, then, but years ago when I used to go walking in this area, quite often, very nearly step on an adder, which is the only poisonous snake in the UK. Joe McNamara in Ireland, you won't even know what I'm talking about because as we all know, at St. Patrick banished all the snakes so you don't have to worry about adders but we have them round here and um, I'm not sure what God was thinking but I'm sure he had a good reason anyway so this woman said she was five years old and they were having this picnic and um, she remembers finding this beautiful beautiful adder 
and um, stroking it and picking it up. I'm gonna hope that the sound's still here. Um, I'm putting it round her neck. This is an adder, poisonous snake. And she said, and I will never forget the look on my mother's face. She said she walked about a mile from where they were playing to, the, to where her mother was with the picnic. And she said, and I will never forget the look on my mother's face when she saw me. I would not have lit... I've had what I thought were quite bad adder situations because we used to have a lot in the garden here when I first moved here. Uh... I'm hoping you can all still hear me. Yeah, Cleopatra. Um, practically cold, thanks for the reminders, Jules. Anyway, when I first moved here and my daughters were age four and two, um, we just kept finding adders in the, in the garden. And I just, I lost a babysitter. I could hardly go out anyway because I was a single parent. And, um, because we live quite a long way from anywhere, you really, if you want to go anywhere, I, I was in a choir and um, various other things, and this babysitter wouldn't come back ever again after seeing a snake just come down the back steps and into the kitchen. My paper has literally just been delivered. Don't tell mum, she's terrified. So am I. Uh, I'm going to leave that as it is. I think that's a really nice point to leave it, and then we'll come back to it if I come tomorrow, I'm, there's a landscape painting here and I, it, as I'm looking at it, it's saying, paint little bits of pink on me, paint little bits of pink on me, so I'm going to do it. I bet you did see them at Landshut, um, Fiona, yeah. I didn't see them at Elston, but I saw them here. Anyway, I remember several occasions. One of the worst ones was when my, f it was either the four-year-old or the two-year-old in her open-toed sandals in the summer was standing, it was Ruth, I remember, standing in the garden just in front of the house. And I looked at her, and I looked down at her feet and there's a coiled up adder, like that far from her foot. And I said, Ruth, come here now. Why? I said, Ruth, come here now. And I won't do it because apparently very loud noises can sometimes affect the sound on an iPad when you're doing a live recording. Anyway, I then literally bellowed at the top of my voice and I made her cry. I'm just going to do one more thing to this quite sort of dramatic dark painting which I do intend to add some more trees in the foreground and make the wall look more like a wall but right now I'm going to do that thing before I leave you to go and enjoy the rest of my day and again this is just like something hiding behind the dark skies and maybe it's a metaphor for life but it works for me anyway and there usually is something amazing well there's always sunshine behind a dark sky if you if you like are an airline Pilot, every day is a glorious sunny day, isn't it? Quite like doing that. Right, has anyone got any questions? Now's your chance. I just think it lifts it. Your signature touch and the line, thank you. Did I have anything I needed to convey? You're probably not interested, but there is yet another rabbit in the fridge. And I really, really like the curry, but Fivey said, I think I'm going to try roast rabbit because it's a young one. And I just said, I, I'd like the curry, but I think he's going to roast it. So I'll let you know tomorrow how that goes. Anyway, time and tide stop for no man. Right, have a lovely day. Bye.